Fat Dag is a Weight Watchers leader in Indianapolis, Indiana. However, the views and opinions expressed during this podcast are his own. They do not represent the views of Weight Watchers. And now, here's your host and wingman, Fat Dag. I am your host, Fat Dag, and you're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations, and I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Well, hello there. Welcome to episode 133 of Wise Advice. And uh, this episode is brought to you again by Nokia Health. Go ahead and visit our folks at health.nokia.com. A lot of great products to help you in your health and wellness journey. Uh, We couldn't do it without them. So thank you for that support. I want to catch you up on a couple of things that's been going on. Uh, you know, earlier this week, I, I had the great honor of of having uh, Tony Williams. I don't know if you follow Tony on Connect, but uh, Tony Williams one nine seven three one on Connect uh, was in the area. He shot me a text and said, "Hey, Mike, I'm in the area. Any chance we could hang out and, and grab a bite?" And I said, "Yeah, man, I, I would absolutely love to hang out with you." So he made a about a two hour drive down. We we sat down. We had dinner. Uh, we opened our dinner with our fruit cup. Just sat there, two guys, you know, sitting at Top Golf, eating a fruit cup, drinking water. You know, it's about the most natural thing there is. But but man, we just we caught up for a couple hours and we really had a blast. Uh, it's really fun when you get a chance to meet other people who are on this journey with you. And, and you can relate to them. You know, a lot of us have a lot of great support in our life, but it's really different when you actually meet someone whose journey is similar to yours and you can just kind of bounce ideas back and forth. Uh, we had a, we had an amazing time. And one of the things he told me, and, and we talked about it quite a bit, was how successful we all are on this weight loss journey when we really focus on what we're doing and how, you know, whether you do it online or do it in the meeting room, that it's important to find some rock stars in your life and some some key people to help keeping you going. And uh, he asked me to deliver a shout out to his receptionist, Therese, because we, we sat there and talked about the meeting room and how critical it is and, and the role that the receptionist plays in all that. You know, a lot of times uh, us as leaders, you know, we kind of we kind of take the responsibility of whatever happens in the meeting room as kind of our own deal. But but man, that 30-minute weigh-in piece can make or break a meeting. And while the leader is sitting in the, talk, the front of the room talking, that receptionist is behind the scenes and getting the awards ready and, and getting the meeting stuff ready. And so he wanted to make sure that that I give our shout-out to Therese saying how wonderful she is, how amazing his meeting is because of her and the team that they have up there. And so I said, you know, without a doubt, you know, every single meeting I've been to, the receptionists are absolutely key to the entire program. So Therese, thanks for what you're doing. Uh, Tony, good to see you, my man. Thank you for driving down. I can't wait till the next time. The next trip is on me. Uh, We'll certainly get it done. Let's talk about Halloween. Halloween's coming up. We got about a couple days left before Halloween. By the time this hits the air, we got one or two days. Uh, What, what, what's the strategy? What is your Halloween strategy as you go through it? If you, if you allow Halloween to just sneak up on you and, and you miss you know, planning part of it, you're going to just take whatever society gives you and you're going to have to react to it. Well, rather than be reactionary, I want you to make a plan for this holiday season, for the, for the entire season coming up in general, but Halloween in particular. A couple of things I'm going to ask you is, you know, we spend so much time over Halloween being scared of ghosts and goblins and witches and warlocks and, you know, all the crazy costumes, the werewolves, everything that's out there, we're, we're afraid of it. You know, we're afraid of things that go bump in the night, but, you know, how about dressing up as, as heart disease? How about dressing up as a stroke? How do you dress up as high blood pressure? How do you dress up as obesity? Those are things that we actually absolutely need to be afraid of. But instead of being afraid of those, we just kind of become accustomed to those things in our lives and we just kind of gotten used to them. 
When the reality is, is we have to say, you know what? That's the real fear. The real fear is that we're going to shorten our lifespan because we're afraid to take control. We're afraid to do the hard work that's necessary to take our life back and get it under control. And, and a little bit of candy on one day a year shouldn't have an impact in that journey. But you need to make a plan. One of the questions I asked is, is how much candy did you have? Much, sorry, how much Halloween candy did you eat in September? For most of us, the answer is none. So if you had no Halloween candy in September, then you've just proven you can go an entire month without it. Why does October now become different? Why all of a sudden now, because the marketers said that we have to hand out candy and do this, all this crazy candy stuff, why all of a sudden now does the craving become stronger and we have to, we have, to have it? We just proved that we didn't have any in September, and all of a sudden now that October's here, we got to have it. Certainly, if you want it, as you know, you can have it. You can track it into your plan. That's the kind, of, the kind of thing you can always have the ability to do. But I want you to make a plan on what you want to do. My plan is the last kid at my door is going to get the entire bag. I buy the good stuff. I'll be honest with you. You know, if, if, you're, if the parents send the kids out to do trick-or-treating, that's on the parents' responsibility to make sure they're doing well with it. But I'm going to give the kids what they ask for, and I'm going to hand them the actually good candy. The very last kid at my house is going to get the entire bag the rest of what I have. And I get to decide who the last kid is. Around 8.45, 9 o'clock or so, I'll start looking at the street, and one random kid will come up, and I'll notice he'll be the, the only one by himself or whatever. I'll dump the bowl into his bag, I'll turn on my lights, and off we go. You know, Because that's my plan. I don't need it in the house. I don't want it. I didn't have any in September. I certainly don't need it in October. Other people are either doing healthy snacks, they're doing stickers, they're doing Play-Doh, they're buying candy that they don't like, so there's no temptation. They're not buying at all, they're completely not avoiding the holiday, or they're just simply throwing it away. When the light goes out, when, I mean, sorry, when the day comes on, you just turn the lights out and sit quietly. Whatever you have to do to get through this one day, it's just one day. You clearly can do whatever you do, but I want you to go into it with a plan and I want you to be your understanding of what real fear looks like. I want you to open your eyes to that fear of, of not taking control of your life. What does that look like? That is what we want to focus on. So keep your eye on that. Out of the gate, uh, Anne writes in, and this is a great email, and Anne writes in and says, Dear Mike, uh, when I began my Weight Watchers journey in January 2017, I couldn't have imagined this day almost nine months later. I have so many amazing things happening. I've lost 100 pounds. I'm in Wonderland. I moved from having an obese to an overweight BMI. I've lost one third of my weight. Seriously, a third of me is gone. I'm still on my journey, and I know I will get there. And from here on out, I know I'll enjoy the ride. Already, I can enjoy so much more in life, long walks, higher energy. I look better. I can do simple things again, like changing my own toenail polish, getting up from the floor, and scratching my own back. Here is a little more about why this journey has worked better than any in the past. Well, I found you, Mike. Your first Fat Dag Inspirations on Connect, and then this amazing Wise Advice podcast. By taking time to write down my why... I was able to spring from it at any time to help me focus. Writing it down is so important. In fact, I keep a journal that now has six parts. My why, my how, my non-scale victories, my favorite fat dag quotes, awesome things about me, and a section for random other notes. I'd like to add that you, Mike, recommended that I write an awesome thing about me every day when I was feeling blue one day. While it's hard for me to acknowledge this sort of thing, I've been doing it, and it turns out to be pretty fun. I always keep this journal with me, and I'm jotting things down in it all the time. Whenever I need focus, I can either try writing something new or read some of my notes. It always helps. I love getting Blue Dot to my Weight Watcher tracker, and I've earned them almost every day. When I'm out of points, I stop eating points. It really is that simple. I keep track of my exercise, too. This daily accountability helps me to be honest with myself and to notice 
what is working. I weigh myself almost every day, and I've been able to see the big picture uh, of monthly trends to help me get over the natural fluctuations that sometimes don't make sense. Also, I had sort of a personal retreat through throughout September where I simply maintained my weight while I had to focus on some other priorities. I think that a break like this was very good for me. In the same way that a farmer's land becomes more enriched when he has a fallow year. While I hardly lost any weight in September, I've already lost 14 pounds this October. Back to this podcast. It truly has been the game changer for me. Whether I'm listening to a live episode, replaying a prior one, or just hearing Fat Dag's voice in my head, I feel as though I always have close companions on this journey with me. Thanks to all of you who've written in, we all parallel each other in so many ways, and I've learned so much from all of you. I feel the same way about all of you who provide so much encouragement in the Weight Watcher Connect community and in my other special support groups. Most of all, I thank you, Mike, for your time, the commitment, professionalism, and truly wise advice that you pass along to us. It was very very early on that I honestly felt your belief in me, and I was thrilled to have you as a wingman for the first time. Sorry, I was thrilled to have a wingman for the first time in my life. A highlight of my journey was the evening that I met you in early September. Please know that for all of us who listen to your podcast, and especially yours truly, You are making a tremendous difference in this world. It is not only all of us who have pivoted from a life of struggle to fulfillment. All those in our lives who benefit from our better selves are grateful for the impact you've had in our lives. I count my lucky stars that our Weight Watcher journeys have aligned. Finally, thank you for your your service to our country. I am very proud to know you and have you in my life. Why oopsep? I wish you good focus. Anne. And um, I agree with everything you said. And uh, most importantly, it was absolutely an honor to meet with you. Uh, again, you're one of those those kind of crazy people that that pop up into my meeting room, and I, and I say, "Where you're from?" and 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 you tell me some place that's three, four, five hours away, and it just blows my mind that that people drive in two or three hours just to come to one of the meetings. Um, so it was, it was so fun that you and I got to go to dinner after. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, but we got to go to dinner and just really catch up and really just get to know each other. And from that moment, I've kind of been able to really keep an eye on what's going on in your life. And I, I know firsthand the struggles that you've gone through. I, I, I know all about your Septembers and your Octobers and, and the fact that with everything that you have going on, you stayed committed to the plan. You woke up every day doing your best, assessing every morning what your best was, and simply just doing what was necessary to get through the day. So the the amazing strength that you've shown is what tells me that you're going to make goal. The fact that you've lost 100 pounds, that shows it as well. But But more important than that if you can believe there's such a thing, more important than that is, is your continued commitment to you. You're absolutely amazing. Down 100 pounds in Wonderland, no longer obese, but just simply overweight. A third of you is gone. The non-scale victory that you talk about of, of changing your own toenail polish, I've never done that, but I've clipped my own toenails. And you're right, when you can finally do, when you can touch your toes comfortably, it's different. Getting up from the floor and scratching your own back, things that, that the normal person takes for granted. There are things that I don't want you to ever lose sight of, so I want you to more than just writing them here, I want you to write them in that journal that you showed me and that you talked about. Uh, and just keep a record of the things as you experience them for the first time again so that you never forget what it's like. Uh, Your awesome things about you is very critical because you need to be proud of what you're doing. You need to be proud of who you are. Even at the beginning of this journey, we have to come to terms with everything we know about ourselves, and we have to love it. And that awesome thing Every day that you recognize and you notice 
frames your mind to understand that you, what you're doing is hard work, what you're doing takes complete focus, and you're worth every bit of effort. Another, tr- t- another tip that I would give you is use a dry erase marker. Write them on your bathroom mirror every morning. Put a dry erase marker right next to your toothbrush. In the morning, wake up and you write one thing on your bathroom mirror that's going to last the entire day. So when you go to bed, you remember that real quickly. You truly are doing a great job. I believe in you, Anne, more so than I ever believed in you. You're down 100 pounds. You're focused. You're disciplined. You're plugged into the right support. Nothing can knock you off from that. As long as you continue to do everything you're doing, you will continue to have to continue to have that monthly downward trend until you reach a point in your weight loss journey where you say, I no longer want to lose any more weight. And congratulations on your amazing mindset. Honor to meet you. Uh, Thank you for writing in. And uh, let's continue to get after it. Diana writes in and says, hello, Fat Dag. This is Diana2773 from podcast number 95 with an update. I am a lifetimer mentally who is just giving her body a chance to catch up. I originally wrote to you when I was mere ounces away from leaving the morbid obesity BMI category for the first time in 27 years. My late April labs were not great. So my doctor gave me until late October before he planned to add medications, plural, if things didn't change. Well, now it's late October. Here's my update. I lost three ounces, and I'm no longer morbidly obese. That shackle of 27 years in morbid obesity has been removed. I set myself free, but I did not stop there. I then entered Wonderland, Still nothing changes what I do. I continue to track. I continue to aim for a healthy blue dot eating range. I I stay well hydrated with water. I continue to focus on delicious and healthy meal choices. It's just what I do. We recently returned from vacation. Guess what? Nothing changes what I do. There is no vacation from a lifestyle. We take lifestyle with us everywhere. I lost weight on vacation, and I don't feel I sacrificed anything. Only now, I've also added exercise. Me, the original couch potato, now routinely walks. In fact, instead of cake this year, I celebrated my birthday by walking a 5K. My personal motto is, know before you gnaw. So my assumptions don't sabotage my efforts. I calculate or scan for those point values before I eat it. Knowledge is power. While my why is always in front of me, I create multiple motivations to carry me over short-term or mid-term hurdles. The mindset is the engine that runs this train. I take care of my attitude and outlook first, because if the mind is on board, the journey goes more smoothly. I keep it fresh, both my outlook and my food. Boredom is the energy to long-term success, so I change things up. It thwarts complacency and keeps me focused on my milestones and interim goals. I am in the habit of now asking myself, can I make this meal healthier? I challenge myself to find some ways to do that. No matter how minor the change may be, it's now just what I do, another good habit to add to my growing list. And what about the October labs? In late April, my doctor talked about adding medications when April's lab results came in. He gave me uh, these past six months to see if I could change anything, but he was not very optimistic. Patients have gone into this bargain before with little or no sustained change carried to that next visit. I have put the Weight Watcher Smart Point plan to the ultimate test. I started Weight Watchers within days of getting the original lab results. Literally, the time it took me to research weight loss plans, I got those labs on Thursday and started Weight Watchers the very next Monday. The only thing I have done differently in the past six months was apply the Weight Watcher plan. However, I really applied myself. In order to give Weight Watcher a fair chance, I tracked every single day. 
I did not take a break. I did not have a cheat day or even a cheat meal. I'm not perfect. I made mistakes. I made some poor choices along the way. I had my bad days just like everybody else, but I also didn't quit. Do you know where not giving up brought me? About a 60-pound weight loss by the time I stepped on my doctor's scale this week. It brought me to the fun, yes, fun, of seeing the shocked look on the nurses and my doctor's faces, then watching them scroll back through the chart to the previous visit. They could not believe the difference. And those labs, did I get the added medications my doctor in April was so sure he'd be prescribing me late in October? No, no, my blood pressure was normal. My cholesterol was normal. My thyroid was normal. My A1C, for the first time since receiving the diabetes diagnosis years ago, normal. Not improve diabetes range, not pre-diabetes range, but absolutely normal. In fact, my glucose number is so good, my doctor has ordered my glucose medicine cut in half. That's right. Not only did my doctor not add medications that he planned on, but he is reducing what I'm currently taking. In fact, every single test came back well within normal ranges. Every single one. For many years, I've watched my lab results slowly drifting into the less healthy territory. Medications shored me up when youth was no longer here to protect me from my unhealthy choices. I was unprepared to get results this good. Not only was I able to stop the slide into worsening numbers, but I was actually able to reverse that trend, and I watched all of my numbers improve. Weight Watchers pass the ultimate test. If we follow the plan and apply ourselves, it works, and we make it happen. Oh, and by the way, I am now ounces away from leaving obesity behind all together. That's what Weight Watchers is capable of. And that is what we are capable of. Believe it. Thanks for celebrating with me, Mike. And please give a shout out to the Connect family for me because they inspire and encourage me every day. Diana. And Diana says... uh, Weight Watcher since May 1st, 2017. 2017 is the year that I'm leaving obesity behind after 30 years. Uh, Diana, what a, what a great email. This, this, in fact, shores up everything that we talk about on this program is that you absolutely can make a difference in your life if you go ahead and make a difference in your life. You continue to focus on delicious and healthy meal choices, and that is the focus that got all of your lab results into the normal range. I love what you said, that your doctor not very optimistic, because I'm sure day in and day out, the folks he sees, the average person he sees, just simply wants it to just be taken care of without any extra effort. You're so far above average that you got it done, and you completely shot. And I bet you the looks on their faces were absolutely priceless. I can just picture them now scrolling through the charts going, do we have the same person? Did we make a mistake? You know, and so that was had to have been extremely rewarding. Um, I love a couple things in your email, a lot of them, but I love a couple things in particular that I highlighted. It says, uh, you know, there is no vacation from a lifestyle. We take a lifestyle with us everywhere. You know, if, if, if that's very powerful. You know, if you're sick or you're hurt, you know, it doesn't mean you can't eat healthy. You know, if, if, no, matter, no matter what, how stressed your life is, if you adapt a healthy lifestyle, whether it's stress or it's a vacation, then the food choices you go to for comfort are the healthy food choices. And so that is what you've done to continue to change your life. And then celebrating with a 5K on your birthday amazing. You are a completely different person. It took a wake-up call for you to be that person. It took a wake-up call for you to say, you know what, I need to make a change. And in April, when your doctor gave you that somewhat of an ultimatum or that challenge, 
and you said, you know, I'm going to put Weight Watchers to the test, and I want you now to document your original lab results. I want you to make sure you never lose sight of those numbers, and I want you not to lose sight of the current numbers, and I want you to understand that that all you did differently was apply the plan because you stayed focused on it. The key part to your entire email was when you said, I really applied myself in order to give Weight Watchers a fair chance. A lot of folks just, again, we just want it to work, but we have to understand that in order to make it work, we actually have to make it work. We have to really apply ourselves by not cheating the program, by not cheating at having a cheat meal. You don't have to be perfect. You're allowed to make some mistakes. Quitting is the answer that none of us want to hear. And by not quitting, you got it done. You're continuing to change your life. You absolutely did it. You have reversed so much in your, in your medical history that you did it without medication. Your, your one quote here, I actually highlighted twice, it says um, that for years you watched your lab results slowly drift into less healthy territory. A lot of us do that, and, and when our lab results start creeping up, we just make the assumption that it's old age or, or we're getting older and that's why our lab results are creeping up. But the reality is, is that, that no, it's because we're not living a healthy lifestyle. And as you said, medications shored you up when your youth was no longer here to protect you from your unhealthy choices. That is so powerful and so insightful that, that you know, the medications were used, you know, when you were younger, your body could absorb some of this unhealthy living. And as we get older, our body isn't able to absorb it. So that's where we make the connection that our lab results are creeping up because we're getting older. But the reality is, is that no, our habits are just leading us down the wrong path. So Diane, congratulations on everything you're doing. I completely agree with you. A huge shout out to all the wingmen out in the Connect community. Those of us joining in on Facebook, those of you who are checked in on, on Instagram at Wise Advice, all of you, every step of the way, working together is what get this done. Diane, congratulations on an amazing, amazing story. Thank you so much. Out of Walbridge, Ohio, Lori writes in and says, Hello, Fat Dag. I want to tell you that since listening to your podcast, I have had many aha moments. Thank you for that. I've needed some conks on the head since starting back up with Weight Watchers this past April. I first joined Weight Watchers back in April 2012 with a friend at work. I am five feet and a half an inch tall. And at the time, I weighed 173 pounds. I remember going clothes shopping for my birthday. I hated the dressing room, or the stressing room, as I call it. How did I get up to a weight that rivaled what I weighed during my pregnancies? Fast forward to September of that year, I had shed 35 pounds. I've never felt better. Life was good. I had the trifecta in my life of weight loss, a promotion at work, and a brand new boyfriend. I must admit, I'd never set a goal weight. I wasn't sure how much I wanted to lose, but at that point, it didn't matter because I wasn't going to lose anymore. As a matter of fact, over the next few years, I slowly put back on about 15 pounds. I quit going to meetings, quit tracking, quit eating as healthy as I'd been, I could blame it on the boyfriend, but ultimately, it was my choice to not stick to the program. Fast forward again to last summer. My boyfriend and I booked a cruise for the following March. I weighed 160 pounds. Ugh. We no longer had meetings at work, so I looked for meetings elsewhere. Then I converted to online, lost a few pounds, and then slid off the trail again. For some reason, I thought that fat was magically going to dissolve by the time we went on our cruise. Surprise, I was up to 166. I had a great time on the cruise, making sure that I was strategic with any picture taking, though. I decided I had to get back on the program. The funny thing is, though, I couldn't get myself logged into the Weight Watcher app to track. No matter how many times I tried to log in, it kept saying, oops, something went wrong, try again later. Something went wrong, that's for sure. I tried everything, soliciting help online and on the phone. Nothing worked. I know I could have tracked on my PC, 
but I couldn't carry around my PC around with me now, could I? I was so frustrated. I was ready for this. Recently, I had bought a new phone, the Moto 2, the Moto Z Force Droid. Turns out this phone had British settings, like it would want to autocorrect color for the British version of color and neighbor for neighbor, the British version. I tried again to get into my Weight Watcher app, and this time I noticed a tiny globe in the upper right-hand corner. I decided to click on it, only to find a drop-down that had the choices for a variety of countries. Mine was set for British. So I clicked on the American, tried to log in again, and that did the trick. Well, bloody hell, I said in my British accent. Who would have thought that was the problem? Over the next few months, I slowly lost weight, maybe 10 pounds, which I was happy with. Then summer hit. I continued to track, except for when we'd take vacations, then I would half track. I drank a little more than I normally would, ate out a little more than I normally would, so expectedly the scale didn't move. I wasn't gaining, but I wasn't losing. I was losing and gaining the same three to four pounds all summer, even though I went back to tracking when not on vacation. I was so frustrated. About a month ago, I started listening to your podcast. After listening to one in particular, I realized I wasn't losing weight because I'd been eating like I was in maintenance. I was in maintenance mode. Aha, I was, I was tracking, but I was going over just enough to keep me at a steady weight. I had to get real. I had to quit eating points when I was out of points. Aha. I had to focus. Aha. I had to commit to this lifestyle to not rely on lady luck. Again, aha. To realize that I was not going to accidentally lose the weight. Finally, aha. After recommitting to Weight Watchers, I lost five pounds this past month. I'm out of maintenance mode. We have another cruise booked for next June, and I guarantee you the only strategic pictures I will be taking will be the ones to show off my weight loss. Thanks again for taking your time to continue on this Weight Watcher journey with us to motivate and inspire us with your podcast and connect post. And last but not least, for your service to our great country, uh, cheerio, Lori out of Wallbridge, Ohio. Lori, what a fun story. Uh, it's amazing how this little bit of a technology piece can really kind of knock us off our trail, right? So uh, congratulations on your amazing accomplishment. What I've noticed is that you have made you the priority in your life. I'm sure it was episode 72 of the podcast that talks about complacency, that talks about eating in maintenance mode, the difference between losing weight and gaining weight and maintaining your weight is about six points. That's all it takes. And so if you're not tracking accurately, you're not tracking properly, you could be very well eating in a maintenance mode thinking you're doing everything right, but it's not actually working because you're actually still overeating. The aha moments you've had uh, in your journey are what will carry you to go. I want you to make sure that, that you keep them fresh at your mind. And I want you to keep thinking about them as you go through. Strategically on a cruise, having to angle yourself to make sure the photos are exactly what you like and approve of, that goes away when you get to goal. You can suppress your bad habits for only so long, but you really absolutely have to change your life. And as you change your life for good, that's when you'll start noticing that the things that you want are different. And when that happens, because you're recommitted, you'll see that you end up losing weight. And it happened. You have a five-pound weight loss. Continue with that level of focus. Continue to do everything that you've done to that point, recognizing that you have to continue doing everything that we talked about in your aha paragraph. Start listening to the podcast. Uh, you, you were eating and tracking everything. You were stopping eating points when you're out of points. You became focused. You committed to the lifestyle and you didn't rely on luck. Nothing was going to accidentally take this weight off you. You have to take the effort to get it done. You clearly have, and congratulations on that. Out of Foster City, Terry writes in and says, So I'm one of those that has rejoined for the 100th time. I'm about three months back and being into focused and totally on plan. When I run out of points, I stop eating points. I track everything. As of today, 
I'm down 18 pounds for the first time. I really feel like my head is in the game. In my previous Weight Watcher attempts, I've kind of learned a game of how to get the scale to show a loss for my weekly weigh-ins, usually a part of an ounce or two, and so eventually my weekend binges took over and I would quit going. But I've been feeling like Wonder Woman until, well, I'm a middle school drama teacher and the director of our school productions. This past week is one of the most stressful weeks of the year for me, auditions week. While I tracked everything and I was over about 25 weekly weekly points, I lost 2.8 pounds. I know the loss is the result of just not this week nor the 25 extra points, maybe the stress of the week. My fear is this. I do not want to go back to my old ways of thinking that I can add an extra 25 weekly points and still be able to lose 22.8 pounds. I'm afraid I'll go back to my old ways. I want to reach goal, probably another 60 pounds or so. Uh, Note, over the course of the past few months, my average has been about 1.4 pounds per week. Totally didn't expect nearly 3 pounds. I'm scared that I'll lose my focus. As we start up rehearsals, I can be at school for up to 12 hours. It's a crazy pace, and in previous productions, I usually end up going through the fast food drive through for meals. I'm exhausted by the time I get home after rehearsals, and the thought of pre-planning can seem to be daunting. But I know it's what will work. Any other thoughts? Thank you, Terry. Terry, uh, welcome on your 100th episode of joining Weight Watchers. I think a lot of us can relate. It took me quite a bit of times as well. Uh, there was actually a period of time where I paid for the app and never even opened the app, and I think that was a two- to three-year period. So I understand exactly the rejoining mindset that you have. Welcome to your last attempt at doing this because you really feel like your head is in the game, and that is the feeling that propels you to goal. You've got to understand like you did that this is not a game. You know, we're in this for life to completely change our life. And being able to trick the scale once or twice, sure, you can get a once or twice result. But exactly what happens is when you can no longer rely on the tips and tricks to get it done, we have to quit because we can't handle seeing the scale go up. If you've changed your life, you understand that a gain is part of the process. You will lose and gain multiple times over the course of this journey. That is how the program works. Stay completely focused on the plan. When you're out of points, stop eating points. Now, one of the things that you wrote in I hadn't talked about too many times on the show is that you had some what we call false success. So you had you went over your points this week or that week by 25 extra points and you still lost 2.8. Now, that is successful, but it is dangerous because your brain sees that as, okay, I can loosen the reins, I can have a little more food, I can still lose weight. I call that false success, and that's just the exact same thing as the false gain. It's the gain where you've eaten very well all week, you did everything right, but the scale still rewarded you, or sorry, still punished you with a gain. Those false successes and those false gains are as a result of you tricking the program and trying to just satisfy the scale. I want you to satisfy your mind. I want you to satisfy you in this journey. Averaging 1.4 pounds per week is completely on track. You're doing all the right things to get those numbers. Shift your focus to make that a permanent lifestyle adjustment. I completely understand your hectic schedule. As you start up rehearsals, it's extremely busy. You're at school all day, pre-planning, pre-tracking. You don't have time for that. I get that. Here's a thought. The next time you have a play, what I'd like you to do is is just go through, pick 15 random students, put them on the stage, hand them the script, and let me know how that production goes. You've got to have planning in anything you want to be successful at. You just can't show up on the stage with 15 kids and say, hey, we're going to do a play on Guys and Dolls today or whatever it is, and just hope it works. Well, good luck. Break a leg. No, you, you, that break a leg and the good luck and the good hope that it's just going to work out does not happen. You had to plan. You had to have a strategy. Long before anyone took the stage, you knew exactly what the plan was. 
and you're completely successful in doing that. Go take the stage for your life. It's the biggest production of your entire life. Why would you not plan for it? You can do this. Write down your why. Focus on your why. That why is your script. That why is your manuscript. That why is the blueprint to your entire production. I can't wait to come watch. Just before the show on Facebook, Cheryl wrote in and said she's down 5%. Steven said he's going to hit his 50-pound loss this week. And Chris, coming up on 100, 25 pounds lost. That's absolutely worth celebrating. What is it that you're celebrating? Let's share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com. Click on Listen Now to send in your celebrations, your comments, and your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. I want you to email in your celebrations because I want you to be proud of what you're doing. Well, that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. Good focus.